come. I'm here with Ben Epstein, and it's a brand new movie coming out called Who Are You People? And it's going to be at the Mammoth Film Festival, February the 5th. And after that, you'll be able to see it almost everywhere. How you doing, Ben? I'm doing fine, Al. How are you? Good. Who are you people? Uh, tell us about this film. Well, it's the story of a 16-year-old girl named Alex who lives in Portland. And she's never really fit in with her family before. She does. She always feels like a, a familial outsider. And she has this terribly misguided attempt to seduce her high school English teacher. And her parents walk in on her and they decide to ship her off to boarding school. But before they do, she finds this letter in her mom's desk that she's never seen before. And it's a letter that indicates that her biological father is not the man who raised her, but rather another guy, a, a former convict mechanic who lives in a small town hours away. So she is, she's clever and smart, so she finds a way to get out of boarding school without being detected, and she gets on a bus and, and tracks down this guy. And the movie is about their relationship uh, as she learns more about him and ultimately discovers why her parents kept him secret in the first place. Yes, her parents are Carrie and uh, Judith, and uh, Judith's played by Alyssa Milano, and uh, Carrie's played by John Ells. And, but these parents that, you know, she has, she, she, I mean, Alex, which is played by Emma, Emma Horvitt. Well, Alex always felt different in the family. Now she, she do have a, a set of twins, uh, siblings, they're younger than she is, but Alex did not feel part of the whole family. Why did they make her feel like that? Well, I, I think that there is this secret around the circumstances of Alex's birth. And even though Carrie and Judith love her very much because she is their daughter and they are, I think at their core, good people, she is a fraught subject for them. She represents contradicting feelings. They're both grateful that she's there, but she also brings up a lot of painful memories that are completely not her fault and that are just a product of the circumstances of her birth. So there's always a bit of keeping her at arm's length and a little bit of fear that they probably have not intentionally, but subconsciously put onto her because she does bring up, a, you know, they respond in different ways. You know, for Carrie, it's anger. For Judith, it's detachment. And for Alex, she's probably internalized this growing up as something to do with her. And, you know, the movie is about the journey on their, on, on, on that story of, of, of correcting those assumptions, of figuring out the truth behind them and allowing them to move on collectively. Yeah, uh, and another example where uh, Carrie, uh, the father, uh, seems to always have a little issue with Alex. For example, Alex loves to draw. And, and Carrie seems to be objective to that. He doesn't like her to draw because he, he makes comments about that. She, uh, she seems to they want to be on the artist side. And I, and I felt that Alex felt that also, that felt that what she wanted to do or she felt like doing that, Carrie was against that. I think that anything that Carrie associates with Carl, Alex's biological father, would inherently be threatening to him. I don't think he's, sub I don't think he's consciously saying, no way can my daughter be an artist. But I think that anything that, you know, because Carl's also, you know, I don't know Carl's Picasso, but he draws. And I think that that makes, you know, it rem anything that reminds Carrie and Judith of Carl is scary to them and threatening to them. So I think that they react to that in the way that they react to anything that were, you know, art, mannerisms, what have you. They all, they all kind of scare. Those, those tendencies in her frighten her, her parents, Judith and Carrie, yes. Now, Ben, you're the writer-director. How did you come up with this story? Why did you come up with this story? I've asked, my, I've asked myself why many times over the years, Al, because it took a while to get it, to get it made. And, but uh, I guess the way I came up with it was that I remember being a teenager and having this realization that my parents were also people, that they weren't omniscient, they didn't know everything, and, and that the, their, old, their adult world was was complex and unraveling that world was kind of like solving some sort of emotional mystery for me when I was a teenager. Now, I also should be very clear, 
this, the circumstances of this story are not mine. You know, Alex isn't a stand in for me on any kind of plot level or event level, but on an emotional level, I, I do find a relatability in her about trying to internally sort out, you know, who I am, who is everyone else around me. But in her situation, in this story, it was the, uh, it's coupled with this external mystery of trying to unravel the circumstances around her birth and about who she is. So to me, uh, the, the, the title, Who Are You People, is, is what Alex is essentially asking of everyone in her life, both the people she's always known and the people she just meets, but she's also kind of asking of herself as well. For me, I think I, I wrote this story because I, I figured out what the circumstances were and then worked backwards from there. And then the idea of the story never really left my brain. And that's why I never, that's why I, I endeavored to keep making it for many years and then finally did. Yeah, and uh, here you got Alex and Carl together. Now when Carl finally meets Alex, his daughter, a daughter that he really didn't know and really did not touch her in any way in her 16 years on this planet. How did he feel about her when she showed up on his doorstep? Well, I think he feels two things at once. He is both wants to know her desperately because she's probably the best thing that could happen to him on some level because, you know, he has somebody in the world that he could, you know, a, a kid in that and, and he would he would, he would, he, I think he would love having a daughter if he allowed himself to want to have anything. But I think the other side of him is terrified. And initially that's what the side that comes out. He wants to keep her at arm's length. He wants to keep her away. He doesn't really want to acknowledge her because in doing so he has to acknowledge why she's there in the first place. And that is tough for him. That's, you know, and so I think that he's a person who, who keeps his, his emotions pretty, pretty in check, pretty tidy, pretty balanced. He doesn't really want unexpected big emotions or curveballs because he's a guy who knows he can fly off the handle and he's trying to keep himself measured and calm. So I think Alex and her arrival disrupts that initially, but as she keeps trying to get to know him and wanting him and you know wanting to connect with him, he does want to connect with her too. And that is a, you know, and he finally allows him to do that just in time for the whole thing to get blown up. Yeah, because Alex at the age of 16 now, she's really looking for love. That's what yeah. she's really looking for. She feels she's not getting it from her parents. Now she done met Carl and, you know, she tried to, well, you know, seduce a teacher, but she's really looking for love. And why does she feel like that, that she really needs some love in her life right now at this age? I, I think that there's always been a subtle distance that her family has put on her. And she's always, it's more of an instinct or a, a, that she senses that she it doesn't fit in. You know, her daughter, her, her, her sisters clearly fit in with her family. They're very, they're very in sync. And, they're, and her sisters aren't emotionally complicated for Alex, you know, for Alex's parents. She says to them at one point, I, I, she says to her mother, uh, played by Alyssa Milano, I'm not easy like the twins, am I? And I think that she wants somebody to be easy with. I think she, you know, looks for it in very, very uh, complicated and at times very bad ways. I think, you know, trying to seduce her English teacher is a very bad idea. Running away from home, probably not a smart idea, but it's all coming from a need to connect. And by the end of the movie, I think that she and her parents are able to connect in a more honest and truthful way, but it also carries a, a fraughtness with it as well, which will continue. Yeah, Alice could not even connect with her school friends, the first school she was at, and yeah. also not at the boarding school, not at all. And yeah. Alex wanted to connect with someone. That's why she was feeling like that. Yeah. And, and you put that in the script. Is, is that based on experience from other people that you saw and other, uh, the environment that you were in? How did you come up with that? Well, everything that I write that feels honest to me is a couple degrees removed from my life. I, I've never been a writer who can write about the current experience I'm in or even was in in the past directly. I usually have to have some sort of degree of remove. So for me, I remember, you know, I, I always, I was never the most popular kid in school, but I always had friends. But sometimes I would imagine what if I didn't? And what if I, what if 
one of those friends wasn't, you know, what if I hadn't made this friend or what if that friend had moved away and then I kind of could put myself in Alex's shoes. I think it was important for her to need to not have too many close confidants besides her, her childhood friend, Nancy, who doesn't go to her school. Uh, because, you know, if she had enough, if she was getting enough support and, and positive affirmation from the people in her life, she probably wouldn't have needed to run away. And, you know, I needed to create a character with the need to run away to meet this other, to meet the father she never knew she had. Yeah. And also you as a filmmaker, you, you had to learn the process of writing and being a filmmaker. How did you get your experience? What did you do? Well, I am one of the people who was extremely fortunate and privileged to have gone to film school. I, I went to NYU a long time ago. Um, and I learned a lot there. I met a lot of really smart, interesting colleagues and fellow students and professors there and learned a lot from that. But I would say that that is one way to do it, but it is by no means the only way to do it. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate to have access to that kind of privilege as a young person. But I don't think that that access is the only thing that makes someone able to make a, you know, a filmmaker and learn how to tell stories. I mean, there are books everyone can read and there's work everyone can do. And, you know, we all have access, most people have access to phones and editing software now that, you know, we didn't have when I was, when I was in college. And I think that, that a lot of incredibly talented people I've met in the industry now didn't go to film school and have found their own path. And I think that is, that is very possible. Mine did involve college, but not everyone's does. I think a lot of what I learned was after college as well, just writing scripts that were not very good and figuring out why they weren't very good. And then trying it again and trying it again, making some movies that weren't very good, you know, shorts and stuff, and then figuring out what worked and, and learning new software and technology and, and gradually getting to the place where I felt comfortable making this feature and confident that I would be able to deliver it. Yeah, uh, this is a very good film. And also, like I said, it's a little personal for me, this film, because just like Carl, all of a sudden, his daughter dropped in on his life. And I had that happen to me in 2021. Oh, wow. I just found out I have a new daughter. She's uh, 33 years of age. And she uh, contacted me through Ancestry.com. So, you know, yeah. I understand this film. And I, I was really enamored by, wow, this film is almost like my life a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> I, I didn't have you in mind when I wrote it. <laughs> I'm glad it resonates, though. I mean, I, I want, the, you know, the only hope we can have as, as filmmakers is that something in the work we do will connect to people. You know, it connects to me, and that's why I, I, I was so determined to make it. But, you know, once, once it's done, it's in other people's hands and other people's experiences. So I'm, I'm really pleased to hear it connected uh, with you. And I, I you know, Maybe it's something you could watch with your daughter. I don't know, but. Yeah, yeah. Well, I told her about it. Oh. She said, oh, wow, I got to see this film. So I told her about it and things like that. She wants to see this film. Oh, Just cool. uh, one more quick question. Sure. Now, the uh, actress, Emma Horvitz, she plays Alex. Why did you choose her to play Alex? Well, we had a number of extremely talented actresses audition and, and they all brought interesting takes and perspectives to the character. Uh, but there was something about Emma's first audition that was very clear she was a special kind of actress, that she was in the moment and made choices in a way that were rare and that you don't see very much, especially with actresses playing younger characters. So uh, we, I gave her, you know, with, with, with most serious contenders, I, I would give them, I would meet with them on Zoom and give them some notes, and then they would re-record an audition and we'd, we'd look at it. Within five seconds, five, 10 seconds of Emma's second audition, I knew that she was absolutely the best person to play this part. And then I spent a week really hoping <laughs> that she would say yes, because she's uh, one of the series regulars in the Lord of the Rings show on Amazon that's coming out this year. And she had already been cast as that. So she knew she had a major big platform to be in on the horizon. So, you know, we weren't sure if she was gonna take this indie, but, Luckily, she and I were, you know, saw the character the same way and saw the story the same way and got along and, and she came on board and 
and she was an absolute joy to work with. I mean, every everybody in this cast was terrific. Everyone to, was great to work with. Uh, but Emma's in. Emma did shot every single day and had very few times where she wasn't on camera. So, you know, she really has to carry this movie, and I think she does a spectacular job. Well, that's all the time I have, Ben. Ben Epstein, thank you very much. And people, you can see who are you people. It's uh, it's going to be on February the fifth at the Mammoth Film Festival. Stream it some way, somehow I'll get it. Then after that, it's going to be everywhere else. Again, Ben, thank you very much. And much success to you, to all your endeavors in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Al. Nice to talk to you. This is your entertainment ticket. Latest and greatest.